Good morning. The Lord be with you. It's so good to see everybody this morning. Glad you're here. Come on in. Come on in. Find a seat. Um, we are, man, we are so blessed this morning. Don't these handbell ringers look like uh, a bunch of ringers? I mean, they look great. And, uh, but I'm telling you, y'all are in for a real blessing. Um, so some quick announcements. I'm not going to give all the details. Website, bulletin, there's so much important stuff going on. Men's ministry dinner tomorrow night, 6 o'clock. We're going to be having Dennis Stubbs from Flint River FCA. Awesome guy, awesome ministry. We're collecting desserts for the Methodist Children's Home Thursday, November 16th. So desserts. We're going to have a send-off for, ah, oh man, this one gets me. We're going to have a send-off for Katie Cawthon's foster children, Uriah and Jubilee, on Thursday, November 16th at 5.30 p.m. in the Youth Center. Are they here this morning, Katie? Yeah? All right. Um, at the end of the service, I want to pray for them, okay? Y'all don't let me forget. Okay. Good. We love you guys, and... We're not saying goodbye. That's what I'm just I'm just saying it. We're not saying goodbye. You know, y'all going to keep coming around. That's I'm I'm saying it, but uh, we love y'all so much and y'all are amazing. So that'll be super fun. And then there's an angel tree in this building over here, the fellowship hall. Uh, and so if you want to have a good Christmas, the best way to do it is do something for somebody else. That that's the, so that's one way you can do that. Um, and then um, have y'all ever noticed that this church, I'll call them back. It's fine. I'll, I'll call them back. Um, is this church has a really incredible nativity scene out front. One of the most beautiful I've ever seen. I, no, not one of. The most beautiful I've ever seen in front of a church. And it just blesses our whole community, right? So, um, and there's some guys that have been doing it since the 1800s. Um, and they're tired. They're getting tired. They're not really tired, but... They're kind of going, we need to get some other guys to learn how we do it. It's not hard. It doesn't take a lot of time. Now, I have managed to avoid work the entire time I've been here when it comes to, well, a lot, a lot of ways, but especially since the nativity. I try to come right when they're nailing the last nail and I say, guys, man, you should have called me. But um, look around. If, it's, it's fun. And so, um, but talk that up because we really do need to get some new blood uh, and, and again, it, it's, it's fun, and it's a blessing to the community, especially when those yellow leaves start falling. Uh, more goodness gracious, it's beautiful. All right, y'all ready? Lord, thank you for the day. Thank you for the blessing of coming into this place to have church. Lord, we, we want to have church today. We want you to be glorified in all that we do, and we pray that what we do today will also be helpful to us. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Thank you all. That, did you all hear how they had tuned their bells? The, all their bells were tuned to praise, right? Fred Pratt Gr Green says it this way, Let every instrument be tuned for praise. Let all rejoice who have a voice to raise. Anyone have a voice to raise? And may God give us faith to sing always. Alleluia, alleluia. Uh, we're going to lift our instruments, lift our voices in praise as we sing together, Come Thou Almighty King, number 61. I invite you to stand in body and spirit as you are able as we sing and give praise and thanks. <laughs> Let us remain standing as we affirm our faith together this morning with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Please be seated. We have so much to celebrate here in the life of our church. Uh, you've noticed on in your bulletin and also on the altar flowers uh, here today, there's two rosebuds. Uh, one was born on Halloween and the other born on All Saints Sunday. And so, isn't that cool? So we give thanks and praise for the birth of Rosie Ann and Robert Franklin and uh, in celebration for the Ray and the Wainwright families. Um, we pray for them and uh, proud grandparents, the Pinckneys, as well as uh, the Karen and Bob Ray. So uh, just to keep them in our thoughts and prayers, but also in thanksgiving for that. We also, um, uh, you'll see on the altar table, this beautiful arrangement of flowers. A little bit later on in um, the service, you'll be asked to look upon these flowers and meditate, I think, if that shows up in the sermon. If that shows up in the sermon. Um, if not, just, just remember to just stare at the flowers, okay? Um, but they are in honor and in thanksgiving um, and in memory of our veterans, and we are thankful uh, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month was yesterday, and we celebrate Veterans Day. Uh, are there any, if you are a veteran, if you'll please stand, uh, and we want to recognize you and thank you for your service to this country. Um, so, such a, a large price paid by um, others so that uh, we can uh, enjoy the freedoms of assembly here today, this morning. Also, those of you who are family members, spouses of veterans, um, bless you because you also are deployed. You also serve uh, in so many ways. So uh, we give thanks for um, those many. We uh, did have a family um, uh, who was uh, who had a funeral this week? Uh, Baris Hillis, that's Kelly Hillis's mother, passed away this week. The service uh, was in Dawson. Um, I think it was Dawson. Baris Chambliss, Baris Chambliss, and um, and so to uh, keep the Hillis family. That announcement will be in the bulletin next week. Loving God, we know that you are present. In the ringing of the bells, we are thankful for your presence, for the angels that surround, for the witness and the messengers who bring your word. Beautiful are the feet, beautiful is the journey of those who make their way and share your love. Thank you for the ways that uh, you remind us of your love. Thank you for this community of faith. For those, uh, O oh Lord, that we have on our hearts, some were mentioned, but there are many others unmentioned. You, O oh Lord, know those needs even before we ask. Uh, but we lift them up to you. We know, O oh Lord, that uh, those who are sick, those who are uh, in harm's way, those who are traveling, those who are um, unemployed or those who are um, facing large and small decisions in their lives, seeking wisdom, seeking your way, your truth, your light. Uh, we pray for them and we ask, O oh Lord, that you be uh, with the many uh, who are in foster care, who, um, who provide for, who, for foster families. We give you thanks. Uh, we thank you for uh, all the ways that you are bringing um, goodness and mercies throughout our community. And we just ask for comfort and strength for those in loss, for those who have lost loved ones, those we've seen um, uh, perhaps on a screen this week, uh, be they in uh, uh, Ukraine or uh, the Holy Land or Africa, uh, for those in loss, Lord, we pray for comfort and strength. Those here in this land um, who have lost so much, hear our prayers for comfort and strength. And Lord, we, we know that you hear us when we pray. We know that uh, we can be still and be silent. And you, O oh Lord, hear us even in the 
internal volume of our hearts. You, O Lord, know our needs and our, our longings, and you answer our prayers in your great faithfulness. As we pray together the prayer, the, probably the most important prayer we pray today, which is the prayer you have taught us to say together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The hymn of preparations number 92, For the Beauty of the Earth, let's stand and sing together. may be seated. Please remember to pass the attendance pad and you're welcome to fill out a blue card if that applies to you today. Um, a fellow taste. 
Did anybody see that? A fellow taste? I mean, I just took some time to write it. Y'all ought to at least read it, don't you think? <laughs> All right, so it's a Greek word, and it, I love this word. I love words, and it means unencumbered, uh, and, and this is the idea that God wants our hearts to be free. Don't you want your heart to be free? And so this year, as we're thinking of the season of giving, that's the word that I'm sort of casting before us is our word to gather around. We want to be unencumbered when we give. Like God doesn't want you to give reluctantly, and he doesn't want you to give because you feel like you have to. Now, I want people to give for any reason they can think of. One time somebody said, Tom, if a Satanist came to your church and wanted to give your money, would you take it? I said, yeah, absolutely. I will put that, the devil's money, to work for the Lord. I, 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 yeah, it ain't no problem. <laughs> but that's, that's on a human level. God cares about our hearts. And so when we give, I hope you'll give to the church. If you don't feel like you can give to this church, don't. That's it, simple. If you, don't, if you don't like giving to this church, don't give to it. But I really hope and pray that you'll tithe to a Christian church and not just to some charity of your choice because this is about God this is not about the budget this is about God and your heart do you all hear me I care about your hearts now if you don't want to give to this church I really hope you'll talk to me <laughs> because that's a problem and uh, I think we got a pretty good thing going here but I'm saying this out loud in front of God and everybody. I don't care if you give here or not. Because that's not what this is about. This is about God. And I want your heart to be free to give. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much. I mean, we just sang it. <laughs> For the best gift divine. You've given us everything. You've given us moms and dads and brothers and sisters and flowers and animals and sun and moon. You've given us love in our hearts, but... You gave us Jesus, and so, Lord, we're so blessed. We're so, we're so blessed. It's unbelievable how blessed we are. We know it. Sometimes we forget it, but we know we're blessed. But, God, we can get that so twisted so fast. At least I can. And, and I want to hoard stuff to myself. I want to get greedy. I want to think it's all about me. I want to get afraid of the future. What are we going to do? And Lord, th these things creep into our hearts. And Lord, we don't want that. So God, would your spirit set the hearts of these people free? Lord, set us free to love you in all things and in the area of our money. We want to be free. So, Lord, I pray that we would give to you 10% at the minimum. Because that's what you have asked us to do. That we would give you the first 10% because you give us 100%. Help us to do what we're supposed to do and give you 10%. And then, Lord, grow our hearts to maybe give 11. And, Lord, after that, help us to save for our future and our families. And then help us to spend wisely. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen.
The least y'all can do is sing. Right? Come on. Bells are rocking. This heavy metal. That's what that is. That's some heavy metal. God, I'm sorry. That's, you like that one. Right? I like that one. And, um, that was so hard. Like, I hope y'all, if you're not a musician, like, that's a tough lick. And they did, didn't they do so good? I was talking to, yeah. Um, I was talking to uh, one of them yesterday, you know, and she came up to me and said, Please pray for me tomorrow. I said, what's going on? I'm ringing bells. <laughs> and she was like, it's hard. And if I miss one note, it throws everything off. <laughs> and uh, and th- as a musician, I don't know if everyone catches this, but there's a key change. So it's like just when you get the hang of it, then you got to change bells. You know? And I was just like, when that key changed, I said, you got to be kidding me. Look at y'all. All right, enough. Um, Jane, do you have room for more handbell ringers? You do. All right. I'm telling you, God may be calling somebody to join this handbell choir. You know, it's, it's good to have more than you need, because if you don't have enough, you can't do it. And it is fun, and it's, it's like a little small group. Y'all, I, do y'all have fun? I'm glad they nodded. No. <laughs> yeah, they have fun. So, it's, obviously, it's probably not for everybody, but um, you ought to give it a try. When do y'all practice? Monday nights. Talk to Jane. Um, so, all right, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 25 for the next three weeks. And Matthew 25 is the last chapter in Matthew before the cross, essentially, before Holy Week. Um, and, and Jesus um, is, to me, he is pressing the message in. You know, he's been teaching the whole gospel. There's so much rich teaching in Matthew. And then these are just like, come on leaning into it hard. These are powerful parables, and I hope you'll study them on your own over the next few weeks, you know, because they they have a lot to say to us, more than a preacher could say in a sermon, for sure. The first one is the parable of the wise and foolish virgins, or the wise and foolish bridesmaids. Uh, Matthew 25, verse 1. Hear God's word. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, "'Here's the bridegroom!' Come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch. 
because you do not know the day or the hour. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall never die. Thanks be to God. When I was a kid, I really didn't like this parable. I, sometimes I still don't like it. Uh, but Jesus was the one that made it up. So I think we need to listen, right? But to me, it didn't make logical sense. Like, why didn't the wise bridesmaids share oil with the foolish ones? I just couldn't get that. I mean, I was like, that's not Christian at all. <laughs> you know, like, for goodness sakes, they should have shared some oil. I, that, they were selfish. So that was my first problem. And then I just really didn't like that when they did finally get the oil, they just couldn't come in because they were late. I mean, that just seemed profoundly unfair to me. I mean, to be honest with you, it didn't seem Christian. And yet, this is Jesus' story. So, what do we do with that? Uh, but as I was thinking about it, uh, actually today, because I thought, why wouldn't you bring, oil? if you have one job <laughs> to light the lamps for the bridegroom, why wouldn't you bring oil? But then I thought about it. Because, um, now, I've never been uh, a woman and so, I've never been a bridesmaid. I've been a groomsman, but I've never been a bridesmaid. Groomsmen's are, groomsmen are terrible. They are, they're just, they're all, aren't they the worst? Like, you have to just rent them all tuxes and tell them where to go and just make sure that they do right. And they, we hope they bathe. You know, that, that, but if you're a bridesmaid, that's a whole deal. There's like lunches and teas, you know, and... Uh, and then you've got to get the hair done and the nails and the makeup. And it's a whole ordeal. So, like, for the bridesmaid, it's, you know, more difficult, I guess. But I was thinking about how could you forget the old. Oh, I've never been a bridesmaid, but I bet if you have, especially if you had to go to another town or, you know, I could get where the day of the wedding you'd be like, hey, I forgot my foundation. Hey, I need some... I, did anybody bring a straightener? I need a straightener. You know, like I could see where you would forget something important to the day. I know the men are like, this does not preach to me. It's okay. I'm trying to preach to everybody. So I get how they could be forgetful. I just, I just don't get this. Some things about this. I don't get why you would just not let somebody in a wedding. If somebody was late to your wedding, or you didn't even get there until the reception... There was traffic on I-75, golly. What would you say? Well, don't come then. You didn't make the wedding, you can't have any food. No chicken fingers for you. No. What do you say? Come on, we're happy. It's a part, right? We think of grace and mercy, which <laughs> sounds a lot like Jesus. What's going on here? Now, there's a question. Is this parable about the first coming of Jesus... Or is it about the second coming of Jesus? Or is it about all the time? The answer is yes. And we, you, us Christians in the modern era, we think about this as a second coming parable. That's how it's been preached to us. A lot of our songs are about this. There's tons of songs about the midnight cry and, you know, the, all, all of that. And, and it's great. Originally, Without question, this parable Jesus is telling is about the first coming. He is talking to the nation of Israel, his people, the, the, the chosen of God. He's their Messiah. He's the groom. He's telling a story like, hey, there was a groom coming to town and some were ready and some weren't. Hello? This is obviously a parable meant to shock and awake the hearers in his context. It's about the first coming. And obviously, it's also for us exactly like the second coming. Right? No? Yeah? I think it is. But I also think this runs very deeply. Because it's, if you read the parable carefully, to me, it's not about Hey, well, one day Jesus is coming back. What do we do till then? I don't know. Uh, look busy, you know. Um, I think this parable is about now. 
this parable is about today. Not just the first time Jesus come, and not just the time which we anticipate when he will return. If Jesus does not return in 2023, it would be cool if he did. be kind of cool if he didn't. I mean, there, you know, I, I got mixed feelings. <laughs> There's things I'm looking forward to, things I'm tired of. <laughs> Let's say he didn't come back in 2024. Let's say he didn't come back in the 2020s at all. Right? Th- then w- we got to go, what's this parable say to us in the meantime? So, my, my first question is, um, what's, what's the oil? What's the oil? In the first century, um, the Jewish wedding custom was that a groom, the, by the way, kids, bridegroom means groom. I know, I didn't get that for a long, you would think it kind of means, it, we don't use the word anymore. Bridegroom is groom. Why do they call it that? I don't know. But this is about the groom coming. In our culture, it's all about the bride. In first century Judaism, all about the groom. You don't have to like it, just this is how it was. The groom would come and talk to the dad and propose and make an arrangement. And then he would go to his father's house and prepare a place for his bride. Usually, he would probably add on a room to this father's house. Does any of this language sound familiar to anyone? That he would go and prepare a place? When Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you, he's totally using marriage bridegroom language. And that's why whenever we say it's mansions in heaven, I hate to tell you that's a bad translation. You're not getting a mansion I got me a mansion in glory. It's going to be... No, no, no. We're going to still sing the mansion songs because they're great. There's a lot of good mansion songs, and I don't mind. Uh, Victory in Jesus. I mean, come on. Verse 3 of Victory in Jesus is, is the best. What he's, it's in my Father's house, there's many rooms. And I go to prepare a place for you. Isn't that cool? It get, to me, it gives actually more meaning to that then we're not just all separate in our big old mansions. No, 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 we're together. Again, we're part of God's family. Whew. All right. So, he would go to another town. When's he coming back? Well, when he gets done preparing the room. <laughs> how, how long is it going to take? We don't know. There's no phone. There's no internet. Uh, there's no... We don't exactly know when he's coming. Might be today, might be tomorrow, might be next week, might be next month. But you would kind of get an idea of the time. And so then the, the bridesmaids, their part was to kind of go out and, and welcome the bridegroom, the groom, when he's coming into town. That's why they had to have oil in their lamps. You know, if it's not, it was a celebration. By the way, that's why when it says, um, and when Christ returns, the dead in Christ shall rise and meet him in the air. That's the same thing. We're not, it's not like Jesus is coming and we go, zoo, zoo. No, Jesus is coming back and, and the dead in Christ shall rise and meet him in the air. I know, think on that later. That'll cook your goose. Um, so, welcome back, internet crowd. I keep moving around. They're not used to that anymore. Um, so, so, what's the oil? Because it's all metaphor. Jesus didn't give us the answer key. So you make up your own answer. But what do you think? What's the oil? Is it faith? Is it, is, it, is it believing in Jesus? Is it salvation? I think those are all really good answers. You know? But what does it mean that we would have oil in our lamp? Um, I, by the way, yes, I think it means all of those things. That we have faith, that we're believing. But this idea that there's, do you have enough oil or not? To me... This is talking about presence. This is talking about a relationship with God that is sustaining you. So that you have enough and a little left over. That's why you can't share it with anybody else. Because it's it's your relationship with God. And so you can't cram for the test. You know? It's, it's not like midterms, it's like farming. You know, you, 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 gotta, 
you got to do the daily work all along. You don't know when the harvest is going to come, but you, you know that you got to do this now. Can't wait till six months from now. So I, I think the oil is this idea of being present with God. Um, so how do we get that? That's the question, right? How many of you want to be like... I want to be ready when Jesus comes back. Don't you? I want, to, I want to be in, and this is a scary parable. So how do we make sure we have enough oil? One thing I do is I think we got to look at a guy named John. John was one who understood this principle. Uh, you can turn in your Bible to John chapter 3. And John chapter 3 has really been famous for one particular verse, right? But we're not reading that one today. After that incredible passage, John 3, 16, and a little bit after that, this is about John the Baptist. And John the Baptist, you talk about somebody who was expecting the, the first coming. He was the leader of that movement. He was ready and looking. And in fact, he was telling everybody, you need to repent. You need to get right because God is coming back. God is coming to make things right. Are you tracking with this? So listen to what John the Baptist says or what, what is said in John 3 verse 22. After this, Jesus and his disciples went out into the Judean countryside where he spent some time with them and baptized. Now, John also was baptizing at Anon near Salim because there was plenty of water and people were coming and being baptized. There was before John, this was before John was put in prison. An argument developed between some of John's disciples and a certain Jew over the matter of ceremonial washing. Isn't it good to know they were arguing about baptism <laughs> that long ago too? They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, that man who was with you on the other side of the Jordan, that's Jesus, that man who was with you on the other side of the Jordan, the one you testified about, look, he is baptizing and everyone's going to him. To this John replied, a person can receive only what is given them from heaven. Hear that? A person can receive only what is given them from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said, I'm not the Messiah, but am sent ahead of him. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. Uh, 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 check it out. There goes that marriage illustration. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend, this is the best man. The friend, the best man who attends the groom, waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the groom's voice. That joy is mine and it's now complete. He must become greater. I must become less. He, another translation, he must increase. I must decrease. Now let's get real clear on this. John the Baptist is awesome. Chosen by God. Incredible. But he's not having a great day by human standards. Attendance is going down. He's losing people. H how do y'all feel <laughs> when, when you feel like things are going in the wrong direction with your family or your school or your sports team or your church or your life? J John's like, and yet what's his impulse? He's losing followers. And what's he say? I'm not the groom. I am just the best man. <laughs> I, I, it's, not, it's not even close to about me. He's going to increase. I'm going to decrease. If you want to have oil in your lamp, 
you got to be crystal clear on who's the groom and who's the bridesmaid or the best man. And only one person gets to be the groom. And it's not you. Right? I mean, this is just so basic, but it's so true. If you want to have oil in your lamp, it is about God. He must increase, I must decrease. In other words, on the throne of my life, I want it to be God. I want more of my time, more of my attention to be on God and not Tom Carruth. You know, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I love my friend Gilbert in AA in Augusta. Oh, I miss him. And I would hear Gilbert share it sometimes in a meeting. Gilbert would say, oh, my name's Gilbert and I'm an alcoholic. Hey, Gilbert. And he'd say, well, you know, this morning I got up and I decided to put my God suit on. And it didn't go too well. And about halfway through the day, I remembered that I don't need to play God. And I decided to take my God suit off and just be Gilbert. And it got a lot better. I mean, what a, I mean, what a brilliant metaphor, right? Anybody guilty? This preacher is. I mean, yeah, of course I believe in God, but I can wake up and run the show. That is not a way to have oil in your lamp. And even if you're praying, and I, ho- I know a lot of you are praying, aren't you? I hope. I know a lot of you pray. But let me ask you this. How much of your prayer time is, dear God, thank you for this and thank you for this. And Lord, please bless this. And Lord, you know, this is on my heart and I'm struggling with this. And please bless. Jesus' name, amen. And God's going, hi. Oh, hello. oh, oh you're done? Okay, uh, talk to you later. Like, how much of our prayer time is just incessant chatter on our part? Are y'all tracking with this? Again, I think that's important. You got to get that stuff out for sure. But it's a relationship with a being who's alive, who has a will and a consciousness and something to say back to us. And I think that's where the oil comes from. Like, how much oil do you need? Great question, isn't it? How much oil do you need? That's the problem. I don't know. You don't either. But I need to have a little more than I think I need. How much of the Holy Spirit? Do you want to be sort of filled with the Spirit? Or do you want to be full of the Spirit? Or do you want to be overflowing? Preacher, I'd really like to kind of run on fumes for a few months, maybe a year. You just kind of do the bare minimum. Uh... It's working pretty well for me. I'm miserable most of the time. Isn't that what we do sometimes? Just the bare minimum. And again, even this question, what do I, how much, how, how do, I need to know how much oil to have. All of that still sounds like duty bound, like, uh, 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 and God's going, no, no, no. It's about a relationship. It's about a relationship. Tommy mentioned staring at the flower, so I'm going <laughs> to bring that in so you don't go home wondering. At the first service, <laughs> I said this. I said, some of you, you're, you know, it's like your brain doesn't stop. And so, some of you, you just need to stare at a flower. By the way, it is a commandment of God. Did you know you're commanded to look at flowers? By Jesus, New Testament command, Jesus said, stare at the lilies. Consider the lilies. Contemplate the lilies. I dare you to. Instead of just your prayer, instead, today, find a flower and stare at it. And and don't talk and don't think. Just look at a flower. And you'll probably start to open up this space where God speaks to us. We have to slow down the... That's what I said the first time. I said, some of y'all just need to stare at these flowers right now and quit listening to me. You'll get more out of the sermon. (laughs) Just zone out, stare at the flowers. You'll get more out of that probably than anything I say. 
I hope that's not entirely true, but. Our minds are like uh, a dog chewing on a bone. You ever seen a dog chew on a bone so long that its, its gums will bleed? Because it does not know when to stop. And you have to take it away. And our sort of minds are like, they, we, they just... And we got to learn, nothing wrong with that. God gave us our minds. But we got to learn how to make it not be about us for a few moments. And focus on God. He must increase, we must decrease. One of my favorite phrases to say is, I'm not much, but I'm all I think about. And we laugh, why? Because we all relate to that, don't we? I, I live in my head all the time. You live in yours. We, you can't escape this. So we do think about ourselves a lot. But we've got we to decrease the focus on self and increase the focus on God. And then I think we'll have some oil in our lamp. And we'll, it's fine, we'll be ready for the second coming. Yeah, obviously. But way more important, we'll be ready for today to be God's people now. Because guess what? He is coming. He is coming. Now, like right now. Give me oil in my lamp, keep it burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep it burning. Keep it burning till the break of day. Dear God, thank you so much. Lord, you are the one that gives us oil and we can't get it from anybody else. And Lord, of course, we want to have a relationship with you, Lord. If there's anyone here today who is just lost and sick and tired of their way of doing things, I pray that right now they'll open up their heart to you and say, Jesus, would you be my Lord? Would you be the groom? I want to be your bride. I want, I want to be yours. For all of us, Lord, I pray that you would... Help us to go way deeper in having oil. We know it comes from you, and we need it, and we ask for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, before we sing Uriah and Jubilee, can y'all come on down? And then we're going to sing. Do you believe still here? Oh, okay. Just your eye. Is this okay? You brave? She okay? So, oh, Children's Church. Okay, okay. Thank you. Oh, I'm jumping the gun. Ryan's like, what are you doing, dude? All right. Let's sit. Good thing. We got a song queued up. Let's do a song. Um, breathe on me, breath of God. Breathe on me, breath of God. Let's sing.
You may be seated. Um, I, um, as pastor, one of the things I like to do is if we know that somebody's leaving our church for a season or, you know, for a long season uh, to go to a new place, I like to have a prayer of blessing for them because it's like they're part of us, you know, and we want to put our blessing on them and God's blessing on them. Whoo, come on now. <clears throat> All right, Uriah and Jubilee, I just, we just love y'all so much, and y'all uh, are part of our family. And here's what I want y'all to know. First of all, you got biblical names. Uriah the Hittite and Jubilee, all right? Uriah was one of David's mighty men, all right? And so you're a mighty man. That's what your name means. You're a mighty man of God. And we want you to always remember that God's going to give you strength to grow into a mighty man of God, okay? And Jubilee, the, the Jubilee in the Old Testament, every 49 years, they would cancel all the debts and forgive everything. And it was kind of like, let's get things back to the Garden of Eden. Let's get things back to the way things are supposed to be. Jubilee is when we go, ah, everything's good. And that's what you are. You're good, okay? You're very good. You're just the way you're supposed to be, okay? Don't ever forget that. And I, I hope you'll come around, right? But just know this. God always loves you, but we're always your family. You know, you've got family right here in this church. And, and some of them you know, and some of them look weird. And uh, some, of them, <laughs> some of them you don't know. But, um, but we're, all there, we're all your family forever. Amen? Amen? All right, so we're going to lay hands. And if you'd like to come up and lay hands, uh, if that's comfortable to you, let's do that. Or you can just extend a hand from where you sit. But some of you, won't you come and, and lay hands here? We're going to say a prayer for you, okay? All right. Thank you, guys. We're, we're going to wait a second. That means a lot, youth. We've got some youth coming down here. Y'all ought to come out of the balcony more often, you know? <laughs> it's great down here, you know? It's, it's not so bad. It's not so bad. All right, let's pray. God, thank you so much for Uriah and Jubilee. They are precious and they are yours, you know? You know, we think of them as our children, but before they were our children, they're your children, and we know that. And Lord, thank you for Katie and just the incredible mother that she is to them and just her heart and her love. And God, I just pray a special blessing on Uriah that he will be a mighty man of God. And I pray that Jubilee, a special blessing on Jubilee, that she will know that she is exactly the way she's supposed to be, that God made her good. And God, I pray that you will just protect them and bless them. And uh, I pray we'll see them soon. Uh, we say all this in Jesus' name and all God's children said, amen. 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 All right. Go in peace.